Nikola Jokic was called the worst MVP in over three decades, Giannis Dedekumpo won the championship the hard way instead of ring chasing, and despite a historically great playoff run, is still underappreciated. Here's every reason for why those two, along with five other NBA players, deserve more respect from fans, media, and fellow players, and stay tuned to see who's the most underappreciated. Over three quarters of this channel's viewers aren't subscribed, so if you haven't already and enjoy my content, help me get to 50k by subscribing. Also, hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into this. Remember, this list is in no particular order. Having said that, number seven, Giannis Adetokounmpo. He's not like seemingly every other star player nowadays who's tight with their rivals off the court. Giannis despises the buddy-buddy culture that's developed in the NBA. Was uh, Kobe ever close with his... Uh, nope. Yeah, like, was Kevin Garnett ever close with his... Uh, the guys he played against? Or oh, Jordan or all these guys, LeBron? Um, it's, I think it's just being, just being competitive. If I know that I'm going to play against them and I'm going to see them in the playoffs or I'm going to see them in many more years to come, uh, it's, uh, I try to stay away and not build a relationship because I know that you know, when I get on the court, I'm going to go 100%. And uh, maybe uh, you know, if I build a relationship with somebody uh, or I'm close to somebody, he probably expects me to go 50% or take it easy on him. Uh, but that's, I want things holding me back when I go out there. The finals MVP was called out by James Harden for having no skill back in 2020. You know, but I wish I could just run, run and with seven feet and run and just dunk. Like that takes no skill at all. <laughs> I gotta actually learn how to play basketball and how to have skill, you know? Giannis would respond to that after securing his first ring before the beard. Like it's easy to go somewhere and go and win a championship with somebody else. It's easy. I could go, I, I don't want to put anybody in the spot, but I could go to a super team and, you know, just do my part and win a championship, still one. But this is the hard way to do it and this is the way. And we did it. Yeah. Fucking did it. With rings coming into play at such a high rate in debates about a player's greatness, players are pressured now more than ever to team up with other superstar players. Not only does this hurt the competitiveness of the league, but the stars leave a city of NBA fans in the dust, resulting in them likely not watching basketball again. Fans in Houston were left with nothing to cheer for in 2021 after Harden forced his way out to Brooklyn. Not only does ring chasing kill off the league's popularity in those cities, but it also makes the league a lot more predictable and therefore less shocking. If you're someone who's rooting for the NBA to catch up with the NFL over the next couple decades, Giannis Dedekumpo is someone you should be thankful for. I certainly am. It was a blast watching him set records in this year's playoffs and secure the franchise he was drafted to, its first ring in half a century. In 21 playoff games, Giannis averaged 30.2 points, 12.8 boards, and 5.1 dimes. He won his first Finals MVP award and his first NBA championship. Given the popular opinion is still to rank him below LeBron, KD, and Curry for the best player in the world, does that make him the most disrespected player on this list? I'll talk about that at the end. Number 6, De'Aaron Fox. Despite averaging 25-7 and seven last year, ranking 7th among point guards in player efficiency rating, he wasn't named an all-star. A tone of disrespect that's become familiar for Sac Down's franchise player. He's been one of the fastest, most explosive guards in the league since he was drafted back in 2017. Unfortunately, he hasn't been able to get the Kings back to the playoffs yet, making it 15 years since the last postseason game played in River City. That doesn't mean De'Aaron isn't an elite point guard. His two-way production has, for the most part, resembled an all-star. However, the one weakness in Fox's game has been his three-point shot. He barely crept above 30% from deep during his rookie year, then jumped to 37% on three attempts per game as a second-year guy. But in year three, he shot the ball more often from deep and dipped back to 32%. Having said that, Fox has polished off other areas of his game. He's developed as a pull-up shooter from inside the arc. He's improved as a passer and lead playmaker every year. 
and now he's scoring like most of the top guards in the NBA. If he can improve by just a few percentage points from deep, while his franchise finally surrounds him with some talent, then Fox and the Kings could be an emerging story to watch this year. Number 5, DeMar DeRozan. He's the best mid-range scorer of this generation, the first guard to average at least 22 points per game on 52 plus percent shooting from the field since Michael Jordan in 1991. However, the mainstream media is saying the Bulls overpaid him. The Bulls have gone all in on two sub-all-star 30-year-old guys in Nick Vucevic and DeMar DeRozan to try to keep a guy in Zach Levine who has never been on a winning team and now is going to be a free agent in the year and could leave. And I think there's a real chance the Bulls don't even make the play-in tournament. DeRozan's efficiency has gotten better towards the back half of his prime, and as I mentioned in a separate video, he'll be the perfect second option next to Levine. Number 4, Chris Paul. Despite losing in the finals, he still averaged 21 points per game on 54% shooting from the field and 49% shooting from distance. So let's give CP3 a break for coming up short in his first finals appearance, given how he defied father time this past postseason. Within the next half decade, it's not inconceivable that Paul could end up back in the championship series. He's one of the greatest point guards of this era, so let's respect him as that. Number 3, Colin Sexton. Following his third year in the league where he posted 24.3 points nightly on an effective field goal percentage of 51.9% to go along with 3.1 rebounds and a career best 4.4 dimes, the young bull solidified himself as one of the better up-and-coming players in our game. Unfortunately, in discussions about the best up-and-coming players in our league, Sexton's name rarely is brought up. You'll hear about Zach Levine, Devin Booker, Trey Young, Luka Doncic, occasionally Shea Gilgis Alexander and Brandon Ingram, among others. And rightfully so, the NBA's future is in great hands with those young guys. Even though Sexton's not as marketable quite yet, given he's been in a tumultuous situation in Cleveland, I'd argue Collins' talent is right up there with those aforementioned players. The Cleveland guard dropped 42 points in an overtime thriller and received nothing but national praise afterwards against the Brooklyn Nets. Unfortunately, that national attention fizzled when the Cleveland Cavaliers lost 14 of their next 16 games. After spoiling the debut of the Nets' Big Three, at least Sexton got one D-Flow video made about him, as I called him a superstar after that game. But aside from that, the recognition's been few and far between. Sexton's a high-volume three-point shooting guard who's also extremely efficient and is a pesky defender on the other end. Number two, Zion Williamson. Zion had all the hype on him when he played at Duke, but after he got drafted to a franchise that barely gets any attention and then missed the first chunk of his rookie year, his popularity dwindled. David Griffin said it best when it comes to Zion's value, saying, quote, One thing about Zion that's remarkable and as a fan of this team would excite me a great deal is when he came back from his initial knee injury as a rookie, he was asked to play mostly exclusively in the post, and he was a historically efficient post-up player, doing what he enjoyed the least. Then, when Stan Van Gundy leaned in to point Zion, you saw that Zion was historically efficient in that role. So this is a player who is capable of almost anything on a basketball court. He's literally one of one. There's nobody who has his combination of assets. Williamson improved his free throw percentage by 5% and became the first player since Kevin McHale, who's averaged 25 plus points on 60% shooting from the field in a single season over the last three decades. Considering Zion's numbers went up significantly across the board in his sophomore year, the former number one pick is showing that there's no limit to his potential. Number one, Nikola Jokic. Nick Wright of Fox Sports is tough to listen to in general, but this might be the worst take he's ever made. When you look at the list of league MVPs over history, I say this with respect to Jokic. Historically speaking, he would be the worst one we've had in 35 years. The greatest playmaking center of all time is far from the worst MVP in the last 35 years, but Nikola Jokic is definitely the most disrespected MVP of all time. I feel like the only bit of respect given to Jokic is based off his transformation from looking like this to being the best center in the league. While that story is one of the better ones in basketball and deserves to be talked about, 
Nikola's game has gotten so dominant that it's time we start having different conversations. The only players included in the debate for the best player in the league at the moment are in no particular order LeBron, Durant, Curry, and Giannis. Jokic is considered second tier to those players, which is a damn shame. The Joker was missing his second option in this year's playoffs, yet he still averaged 33 and 10 in the first round against Portland, along with 25 and 13 in the second round. While his overly aggressive slap on Cameron Payne was unnecessary and there's no excuse for it, you can see how it'd be frustrating for Jokic carrying the whole team without a second option. Kudos to Devin Booker who said after receiving a technical in the instance that it was an emotional play, I know Jokic isn't a malicious player. Just because he's not your typical flashy, athletic, and cocky superstar, Jokic keeps the flow to his team's offense with his generationally gifted passing vision and underrated scoring. While Jokic was called the worst MVP, Giannis is still behind LeBron, Steph, and Durant on most people's top player lists. Of course, it's subjective, but when Kawhi won a ring in Toronto, everyone had him at least top two. The same thing goes for Curry and Durant. For some reason, people are still buying into the narrative that Giannis has no skill, and that Milwaukee won the title because of Middleton and Holiday's contributions. Don't get me wrong, the Bucks' supporting cast was absolutely incredible, but without Giannis guarding positions 1 through 5 and rotating like an animal to block shots while simultaneously putting the team on his back with his scoring in the post and slashing in the open court, Milwaukee wouldn't have gotten close to the pinnacle. So Giannis is the most disrespected player in my opinion, but let me know yours in the comments section. Hope you have a great day. Deflo signing off.